Family Theater presents Maureen O'Sullivan and Raymond Burr. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Sylvia, starring Maureen O'Sullivan. And now to our transcribed drama, Sylvia, starring Maureen O'Sullivan as Mary. Before I tell you who Sylvia is and how we met, and the way she affected my life in a way I'll never forget. Let me tell you how it all began. I was working in the garden in the back of our house, looking out towards the elms and the oaks that filled a good portion of our 20 acres. The summer grass was so thick and luxuriant underfoot that I didn't hear Greg until he was practically beside me. What's the big dream, Mary? <gasps> oh, Greg! <laughs> Aren't you home early, dear? I didn't plan supper until seven. Oh, I took off early because there's a new project breaking at the office. Oh, again? Oh, Greg. Yep. Means I'll be working all kinds of strange hours and probably have to fly out to Hollywood. To Hollywood? Well, whatever for? Some film commercials for our very important client. Oh. The one who makes it possible for us to live in a style we couldn't afford otherwise. Well, do they have to be made in Hollywood? Well, let's not put the cart before the horse, honey. The commercials and storyboards have to be made up first, and that's going to take at least a month. Are you going to have to write them, too? Uh-uh. Not this time. We just hired a new copywriter today. Well, at least that'll be that off your shoulders. I'll have to work pretty closely with her, but she's awfully good, Mary. Almost too good to be true. Oh? What's her name? Sylvia. Sylvia Manners. <laughs> difficult to explain, but from the first mention of Sylvia Manor's name, I felt a strange uneasiness. Greg seemed to have a new enthusiasm, a freshness that I couldn't understand, and it all seemed to be tied in with the new project to which he'd just been assigned. Even the children noticed it at dinner that night. You're really feeling great tonight, aren't you, Dad? <laughs> Ginny, you know, I'm always feeling great. Yeah, but tonight is special. I can tell. Something good happened to you today. <laughs> Can I have some more milk, Mom? That's your fourth glass, Johnny. Are you sure you have room? Well, sure. All right. <laughs> Come on, Dad, tell us. What happened today? Well, if you must know, Miss Busybody, we hired a new copywriter. A new copywriter? Mm-hmm. What's so good about that? Now, if you had all the problems your father has in getting the right kind of help, you'd understand why he's so pleased. What's a copywriter? Oh, Johnny, you're dumb. I am not. You are so. What's a copywriter? Anyone knows that a copywriter is somebody who writes advertising copy. That's something to get excited about? What's his name? It's not a he, it's a she. Her name's Sylvia. Is she pretty? Well, yes, Ginny, I'd say she is. Every once in a while, Greg, I'm envious of pretty ladies with careers. <laughs> Go on, you've got a career that's much more important. Mm, I suppose so. But after 14 years of marriage, the wife and mother role starts to weigh <laughs> just a little bit thin. Mm. This must have been a rough day for you, huh? No, no rougher than the others. <laughs> Sylvia Manners. Even the name, Greg, it sounds so glamorous and important. It sounds like the name of someone that exciting things are always happening to. Oh, Blanc, how can a name be exciting? Well, I must admit, Sylvia's a pretty interesting person. There doesn't seem to be any part of the world she hasn't traveled to. I understand that ten years ago she gave up a promising career in pictures because she decided it just wasn't the kind of life she wanted. Oh, Daddy, did she ever make any movies? One or two. Mm -hmm. well, how come she's only a copywriter now? She is one of the top copywriters in the business. She uh, married? Uh, separated, I think. And oh. that's a little hard to understand. Why? Well, she's pretty, talented, uh, agreeable, good sense of humor, and a quick mind. You'd think she'd make an ideal wife. Next 
next morning, I made an appointment at the beauty parlor to have a new permanent wave. It was the first time in weeks I'd had my hair done, and my spirits rose when I saw the results. I didn't look quite as mousy as I had before. And then, purely on impulse, I took the afternoon train to the city and spent a few hours shopping for a new hat to match the new hairstyle. And then, purely on impulse, I decided to surprise Greg with a visit to his office. Good afternoon, Jenkins, Brenner, and Brian. I'm sorry, Mr. Brenner's in New York. I can connect you with Mr. Jenkins' office. Uh, One moment, please. I, uh, I beg your pardon, miss, but uh, is Mr. Collins in? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you standing there. Mr. Collins? Yes, I'm uh, Mrs. Collins. Well, I think he's in the conference room. Would you like to wait for him in his office? Mm. It's just around the corner to your left. First door, Mark Private. I'm sure he won't mind if you sneak in. Well, thank you. Mr. Collins! Paging Mr. Collins! Paging Mr. Collins! Are you looking for Greg? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't see you. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I was just resting. I had a splitting headache, and Greg suggested I lie down in his office. I'm new here myself. My office isn't decorated yet. I must look a sight. I better make some quick repairs, if you'll excuse me. Certainly. She looked a sight all right, a vision of loveliness. Even though she hadn't told me her name, I knew she could be no one else but Sylvia Manners. She was tall and slender as a hollyhock and dressed in a suit that made her look like a model. Her hair was the color of spun taffy and her eyes large and clear blue. Even though we were the same age, judging from what Greg had told me, I felt dowdy and a good ten years older. And when you finish with that call to San Francisco, see if you can locate Brenner for me in New York. I want to talk to him right away. But Mary, where did I... you come from? Oh, I came into town and I thought I'd surprise you. Well, you've surprised me, all right. I wish you'd phone first. Where's Sylvia? The girl on the sofa? Yeah, she had a headache. Oh, yes, I know she told me. Oh, then you've met her. Well, not exactly. Excuse me. Yes? Sylvia, Greg. I hate to hound you like this, but if we're still meeting with the client, it's past 4.30. Oh, sure. I I'll be right with you. It looks as though I picked the wrong time to surprise you at the office. Well, I'm awfully sorry, honey. If you'd warned me in advance... Well, it wouldn't have made any difference. I mean, you'd still have had to meet the client with Sylvia. Well, I guess I'd better get home to the children. They'll be wondering what happened to me. bad enough meeting Sylvia the way I did in all her glory. But the thing that hurt me most was that Greg hadn't even noticed my new hairdo or my new hat. It was very late getting home that evening, and every evening for the following two weeks. It wasn't the first time the children and I had been deprived of his company because of his job, but this time it was different somehow. Even though I'd wait up for him, dozing in the chair, listening for the last train to make his lonely way to the depot uptown, he'd arrive home so tired and exhausted that he didn't have the energy to talk about the happenings of the day. And I, I wanted to know how the project was coming along. Actually, I wanted to know a lot more. And it all centered around a head of taffy-colored hair and a pair of blue eyes. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, sorry, I forgot my key again. Oh, that's all right. I can't sleep until I know you're home. Oh, you look awfully tired. Could I... could I fix you something? Uh, no, thanks. You're working too hard. Me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ought to see the time and effort Sylvia's putting into this. I've never met a woman with so much energy. She was still at the office when I left at midnight. Oh, How's, how's she uh, coming along? Swell, swell. Well, she's got the client wrapped around her little finger. The president of the company knows her background, and, well, he wants her to do the commercials, act in them when they're ready. Does that mean that she'd go to Hollywood with, with you? Mm, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Greg, I have an idea. Honey, can it wait till tomorrow? Really, I'm dead. Well... Uh. I guess so. But 
it's, a, it's about Sylvia. Oh? Mm -hmm. Well, well since both of you have been working so hard, I was thinking, if you'd be able to manage the time, why don't you invite her out here for a weekend? To give both of you a chance to relax. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't want to saddle you with a house guest. You mean you, you could manage a weekend? Well, I guess so. She doesn't have many friends in this area. A couple of days in the country might do her good. You want to make it this weekend? Whatever you say, dear. Greg rose to the bait. He was completely unaware of how even the mention of Sylvia made me react. Although our marriage was built on mutual trust, I didn't know what was going on in Sylvia's mind. I tried to convince myself that theirs was only a business relationship. But was it possible to throw two such attractive people together, day in and day out, without something happening? Sylvia was in my thoughts constantly, everywhere I went, everything I did. And now, she was coming to spend a weekend under our roof, at my invitation. There she is, Mommy. Oh, Mommy, she looks just like a movie actress. <laughs> Over here, Greg. Oh, hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Hello, Daddy. Well, where's the crown prince? <laughs> Getting cleaned up. Oh, how do you do, Miss Manners? How do you do? So glad you could come. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you, Mrs. Collins. Oh, Greg, what an adorable little girl. I may be adorable, but I'm not so little. I'm 13. Oh, now, now, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> She's magnificent, Greg. Such a strong resemblance to you. Well, that could be a curse. You want me to drive, Mary? Oh, if you like. You can squeeze up in front with us, Miss Manners. Oh, please, can't you sit in back with me? Please? Why, well, I'd enjoy that very much, Ginny. If nobody objects, that is. Well, of course not. Uh, but I'm warning you, Miss Manners, don't get too friendly with Ginny or you won't be able to get rid of her. This will be your room for the weekend, Miss Manners. Oh. It's lovely. The bath is to your left. And mm -hmm. If there's anything that I can do to make you more comfortable, will you let me know? Well, there is something. Yes? Well, I'm not too sure how to say this, or whether to say it at all. I have a small reputation for being candid, as Greg may have told you. Oh, please go on. Do you mind if we sit? Of course not. Was it your idea or Greg's to invite me here this weekend? Uh, it was mine. Why do you ask? Well, your reaction at the train when you met us. You seem to have the slightly strained attitude of a wife who'd been, well, forced into accepting a guest. Oh, well, I, well, I'm awfully sorry, Miss Manners. Sylvia, please. Sylvia, it's just that, uh, that we, well, we'd met before and I wasn't quite sure that you'd remember. Good night. I thought your face was familiar. You were wearing a little white straw with a gadget on top of it. Yeah. You should have told me who you were. Well, you had such a headache. Well, that was no excuse for my bad manners. It didn't even occur to me that you might be Greg's wife. He told me you never visit him at the office. That's true. That was the first time. Oh, good heavens, I hope you can forgive me. Oh, of course, there's nothing to forgive. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better run along and see if dinner's ready. <laughs> But I didn't go directly down to the kitchen. Instead, I continued to the hall to my room. Greg's in my room. I went straight to the closet and started to fumble with the hat boxes on the top shelf. I found the one with my newest hat in it, and with hurt, unreasoning tears in my eyes, tore the gadget from the top of my little white straw. Holding the two pieces in my hands, I stood in front of the large mirror over the double dresser. My face was pale, and the wind had done things to my hair. I looked so plain and unattractive. Up against Sylvia, I looked like a sparrow beside a peacock. In one fell swoop, she'd cast a spell on my children who were starry-eyed with her glamour and sparkle. If, in a matter of minutes, she could do this to my children, my children, what could weeks of working with my husband do to him? Mom. 
Good morning, Johnny. You're the first one down to breakfast. Boy, am I hungry. That's all the exercise in the pool last night. What time did you go to bed? Uh, Ten o'clock. Uh, Dad said it was okay. And what time did Dad come up? Uh, I don't know. He and Sylvia, they were still swimming when Ginny and me left. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Sylvia. You're just in time to join Johnny for breakfast. Good morning, Sylvia. Hi. Mmm, scrambled eggs and bacon. I don't think I'll be able to resist. Sit down and help yourself. Oh, thank you. I can't remember when I've enjoyed myself more. The business world is lost behind me, and I don't care if I never see it again. Are you thinking of leaving your job? Mm, yes and no. I couldn't walk out on Greg at this point, at least not till those films are shot. When will that be? We're scheduled to leave for Hollywood tomorrow. Hasn't <gasps> Greg told you? Why no? Good morning. Man, am I starving. Why'd you let me sleep so long, Mary? Hey, it looks good. Oh, good morning, Greg. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get the children ready for church. Ginny's still sleeping. Sylvia and I thought you might like to make it a threesome for golf this morning. I'm afraid you'll have to make it a twosome, Greg. Hey, have I said something wrong? Oh, it's my fault, Greg. I thought you'd told Mary we're leaving for Hollywood tomorrow. Well, I did, didn't I? No, it must have slipped your mind. But, Mary, I meant to. Oh, well, that's all right, Greg. It really doesn't make that much difference. But it did make a difference. I felt so alone, so cut out, so unnecessary. As I watched them take off in the plane next morning, it seemed to me that with them went my home, my love, my security, everything that I'd taken for granted for so long. For the next few days, I lived in a nightmare. Then, on the Wednesday after their departure, as I was coming home from shopping and I approached the house, I heard Ginny practicing at the piano. I came in the front door and I walked towards the living room. My heart was beating unnaturally. Ginny, what are you doing? Oh, Mother, oh, you scared me. I'm practicing a new piece. I asked my music teacher for it. It's called Who is Sylvia? And Shakespeare wrote the words. Yes, yes, I know. But isn't that a little uh, advanced for you? Well, I just thought it'd be a nice surprise for Sylvia when she comes home. I turned away and I left the room before Ginny could see my tears. When Sylvia comes home, she'd not only conquered Greg, but our daughter as well. Mom, aren't we going to watch that movie on TV tonight? What movie? The one with Sylvia in it. Do you expect me to let you stay up till midnight to watch an old movie? Not any old movie. This one has Sylvia in it. Now go to bed. Aw, oh, Ma. I said go to bed. Nobody's watching any old movies tonight. After Johnny had gone to bed, I sat alone in front of the television set, watching the movie that Sylvia had made ten years ago. The Other Woman, it was called. It was a triangle involving a married man, his silly, jealous wife, with Sylvia playing the innocent business associate of the husband. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I turned the volume a little louder. Hello. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you called. I've just about gone out of my mind. I have something to tell you I couldn't say to your face. I never looked upon you as anything more than a business associate until your wife planted the idea that I was in love with you. And now it's grown to such an extent that... Darling, what are we going to do? I, I snapped off the set and stood there in the dark, trembling. It was a silly movie, but it had made me realize that I was a silly woman caught up in an emotional twister. I was losing my husband and my children to another woman because of my own unreasoning jealousy. Is that you? Well, I just let myself in. I, I thought everyone was asleep. Well, let's have some light. Oh, no. You've been crying. I, I wasn't expecting you back. 
everything went so well, we wrapped up the deal a day early. Oh. But did... Did Sylvia fly back with you? No, no. She's staying out on the coast. Bumped into her ex-husband, the producer of her first movie, and decided to take another crack at it. I met him. He's a real nice guy. Is she going back to him? Well, it looks that way. Oh. And it... It doesn't make any difference to you? It makes a big difference. It means I'll have to start interviewing copywriters first thing Monday morning. <gasps> oh, oh, Greg. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> What's with the big bear hug and the tears? Oh, Greg. I can't explain. I'm just glad to have you home. This is Raymond Burke. You know, there's an old saying that we've all heard. John Donne said it a long time ago. No man is an island unto himself. Or put it another way, no one can live in a vacuum. We depend on one another. And if we depend on our neighbor for support, how much more should we look to our maker on whom all of us depend? We need God's help every minute of the day. And if we're wise, we'll acknowledge that need by praying to him daily with our families for the help our families need. We won't wait for sickness or sorrow to strike us to our knees. We'll make family prayer a normal, natural part of our daily lives. Because we know and believe that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Sylvia, starring Maureen O'Sullivan. Raymond Burr was your host. Others in our cast were Gene Bates, Vic Perrin, Kathy Johnson, and Richard Beals. The script was written for Family Theater by R. Power Savage and directed by John T. Kelly with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present The Colonel's Daughter. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.